Hi, I'd like to take you on what a typical flow would be like for a developer using GitLab. I will be using uh, EKS as a deployment environment for the first part of this demonstration. We'll also make a quick reference to our recent integration with ECS. I would like to then show you a behind the scenes on how everything works and integrates together. And finally, I'd like to spend a few minutes showing you how to use GitLab to manage infrastructure as code, specifically what is known as GitOps. We have a lot of material, so let's get started. So as a developer, I track my work uh, via boards. Here you can see my three boards open to do undoing. And uh, let's, uh, let's say that there's an application already in production. And uh, it's right here. This is a web app. And as you can see, the, um, it says spring is here and the background is green. And let's assume that someone uh, would like to make that more customizable and, and uh, for our friends at uh, uh, AWS. So uh, there's a request that will be created by someone. Uh, it could be created from the issues uh, screen right here, or simply they can just come to my to-do uh, board and enter customize web app landing page and create and then submit issue. This will create the issue under my to-do board. Notice that the label has been assigned automatically. And uh, uh, I will see this obviously appear on my board. And then uh, I'm going to start working on it. So I'll go ahead and assign it to myself. And then I'll move it to the to my doing board. Now at this point I can actually uh, open the issue. I can double click on it. There you go. And uh, the issue uh, is what the problem is. And uh, the MR or merge request is the center of changes of the work that I'm doing and the place where stakeholders uh, collaborate on the resolution of the issue. So here I'm going to say create merge request. This will also create a branch. And then since I'm starting to work on this, uh, I will go ahead and open web IDE. And um, in here, I'm going to go ahead and navigate to where the source file is. And let's just say I want to change to make it more a customized version for our friends at uh, AWS. I'm going to change the background color and I'm going to say AWS. And then also I know that there is a unit test in, in this project that will test uh, the color of the screen and the string that is being returned. Actually, it's going to test what's being returned as the call to that web app. Web app. So I have to make the changes here too. So I'm going to commit and I'm going to commit to the, to the branch. There you go. Now, if we go back to the MR, Now notice here that in the, in the MR, you can actually click on changes and see side by side the changes that took place in the files of that project that I applied in this case. This is how the stakeholders on this MR can collaborate down to the source code line changes uh, by providing comments. So for example, um, you know, if somebody would like to add a comment to this change, they can actually make a comment right here and say, you know, looks good to me or something like that. For now, I'm not gonna put a comment in there, but you know, you can you can uh, collaborate all the way down to a single source uh, source line. Uh, and, and this is good because, you know, through this collaboration, um, what you get is uh, uh, you get a better, uh, better code quality. It also speeds up uh, the development of features and also increases developer productivity. All right, so let's go to the um, to this next screen, which is the pipeline. So a pipeline has been uh, started. 
uh, as a result of committing the changes to the newly created branch. Uh, since this pipeline will take a few minutes to complete, instead of waiting, uh, I already have the same pipeline already completed, so uh, let's go see it. All right, so here is the pipeline. It's already been uh, run all the way to uh, the end. And uh, this pipeline is part of our Auto DevOps uh, pipeline, which comes out of the box and is based on lessons learned and best practices for continuous integration and continuous uh, delivery. Uh, these pipelines can jumpstart uh, your development work, saving you time and shortening your developing, uh, sorry, your development life cycle. As you can see, they also shift work left as much as possible so that you can identify and fix problems and preempt issues from occurring in production. However, if these pipelines don't, don't quite fit your needs, uh, you can create your own pipeline or modify an existing one. Uh, this specific pipeline includes a, uh, the review app, which is right here. Uh, and this uh, spins up uh, its own uh, environment, in this case in the EKS cluster, you know, so that updates can be validated by the stakeholders of this MR. So let's briefly now go over each of the jobs included in this pipeline. We'll start with the build uh, a stage and also the job uh, which creates a build of the application using an existing uh, Docker file. Uh, the resulting Docker file image is pushed to the container registry and tagged uh, with a commit SHA or tag. Then in the test stage, you have a, a, a few jobs here. Uh, in general, test uh, analyzes your project to detect a language and framework um, that is written in or implemented in, and then it runs the appropriate test for your application. It will also use the test you already have in your application. In this case, it will run the single unit test that I showed you earlier. And if there are no tests, uh, it's up to you to add them. Uh, so let's go down to uh, each of the jobs here. Code quality. It runs uh, static analysis and other code checks uh, on the current code. It creates a report, which is then uploaded as an artifact that you can later download and check out. Container scanning is a vulnerability static analysis for containers to check for potential security, security issues on Docker images. Gymnasium Maven dependency scanning uh, runs an analysis on the project dependencies and checks for potential security issues. License scanning searches the project dependencies for their license and checks them for compliance in your project. Secret SAS scans the content uh, of the repository to find API keys and other information that should not be there. Another area related to secrets is the ability to mask and protect variables. Uh, protect variables. Uh, GitLab uh, provides this capability uh, via our CI/CD variable settings, uh, which I will show you in a minute. Spotbugs uh, SAST, which is also part of our static uh, application security testing uh, suite. Uh, it runs a static analysis on the current code and checks for potential security issues, for example, buffer overflow. The review uh, app, um, it actually creates, like I mentioned before, a container and deploys the application on EKS. This is our integration to um, to EKS and um, uh, the stakeholders actually at this point can review updates to the app before it gets merged into uh, the main branch improving the fidelity of the solution that will eventually get deployed to production. We are on our way to doing the same integration uh, with ECS. Uh, let me show you real quick what we have for that. So this is our, uh, the pipeline that deploys um, uh, to ECS. Uh, as you can see, it's our, our first iteration. The pipeline is, is really simple. It's just to build and then deploy. And uh, we are, as I mentioned, on our first iteration of this work. And, um, and we will be adding more functionality as we iterate um, uh, more and more on this uh, implementation. So at this point, I like to uh, show you the way um, to protect variables, sensitive information. 
So for example, in this case, uh, you can see some variables in this project uh, related to, um, you know, AWS access key and for example, uh, ECS service and task definitions, etc. And you can protect them and mask them by checking um, uh, when during the creation or actually you can edit one, for example, let's, uh, let's uh, do this one. This is not protector or mask, but if you, if you uh, were to change this, you would just click on these um, checkboxes. And obviously masking them will, uh, you know, is useful uh, so that you don't show the actual value in any of the jobs uh, or output that is generated uh, from running the jobs. Uh, so the ability to protect and mask uh, these variables uh, shields organizations uh, from potential uh, security issues. So let's go back to where we were here. And let's continue uh, going over uh, right here to the next stage uh, is DAST. And that's our uh, dynamic uh, application security testing uh, capabilities. The, uh, the DAS analyzes the current code and checks for potential security issues, for example, uh, you know, cross-site scripting. And then the performance uh, is, is called, uh, or it uses the auto browser uh, performance testing. Um, uh, that, that's the name for it, the, the complete name. And what it does, it measures the performance of a web page. It creates a JSON report as well, uh, including the overall performance uh, score for each of the pages. Uh, and it uploads this report uh, as an artifact. Um, all right, so let's go back to the MR here. And this is the MR. All right, uh, so here, uh, one, one thing i like to bring up to your attention is that uh, this MR is related to the issue that, um, that created it. And, uh, and when the MR is completed, it will also close the issue, okay? So um, let's say at this point, uh, I mentioned before that uh, all the, you know, as the jobs run, uh, data is generated and art and reports are generated that are, that are uploaded as artifacts. And on this screen, you can actually see the results of a, a, lo of a lot of the, the, the jobs, uh, the job generated. In this case, I'd like to, for example, uh, if you expand here, the security vulner vulnerability, security scanning, I'm sorry, you'll see a bunch of, uh, you know, the results for each of the tests related to security. Here you can uh, click on the full report. If you want to get more in-depth information about that specific uh, report, and then in here you can, you know, in this specific case, is showing you the different types of uh, sub, uh, security uh, issues that it found, and you can actually dismiss the vulnerability. Vulnerability. Uh, you can create an issue, uh, or you can get, get more information about uh, that specific vulnerability. All right, so let's, at this point, this, this specific MR has been, uh, is, the pipeline ran already, and now we are ready to, is waiting to be merged. Uh, and the assumption here is the stakeholders have had a chance also to, to run the, um, the environment. In fact, uh, if we go here, um, this is the review environment. So if we go to, um, To the review environment we should be able to see the deployment we should have the changes here see so the review environment is actually a running environment that has all the updates applied to it and it's the the point uh, or an environment uh, that the st the stakeholders can use to check that all the changes that were made are correct basically so let's see so let's let's merge the the um, the MR now notice that the merge button here is not um, is not uh, available it's grayed out and the reason is that um, 
this MR has been marked as a work in process. Okay, so this is something that uh, is built in uh, within GitLab, and uh, as uh, you know, to, to prevent someone for you know, it's an extra uh, uh, safety mechanism to prevent uh, an accidental merge. Uh, and to indicate also that this uh, is still being worked on, that don't merge it yet, it's work in progress. So people are working on it, are reviewing it, uh, so don't merge it. So first, um, we need to clear the WIP status, and we do that by resolving the WIP status here. And now the WIP is gone from the title, and now the merge button is activated. Also, you will see that there is a delete source, source branch check mark here that is checked. Uh, th what we'll, this will do is it will clean up all the resources used by the review app, including the EKS container that was spun up. This actually helps uh, with container sprawl, so uh, you won't be left with um, EKS uh, you know, environments running um, and idle. Um, so this cleans up after... after um, you know, cleans up all the resources basically after uh, the merge takes place. So let's see. So let's um, let's merge. And this merge is going to kick off another pipeline that will basically run. Uh, you know all the checks um, that you saw earlier and it'll take the the um, it'll take the deployment to a staging environment that will also be running on EKS so let's go at this point this is going to take a few minutes so let's go back to um, let's go to an MR that has already completed uh, and that is over here Uh, let's go here. It is this one here. This one here. So this is the exact same MR that is executed on the other project, but it's already com it's already completed. Okay, so let's let's go to the pipeline so you can see it it's this one here notice here that uh, you know the changes uh, were merged into master and the source branch has been deleted and the issue has been closed so let's go to the pipeline now notice here now that this is showing you the um, there is showing some uh, jobs here that were not there before and this is basically the the CD portion of the pipeline the continuous delivery portion of the pipeline uh, you can see here that there is uh, a staging environment so again like I mentioned before the all the uh, once the uh, updates have been merged an environment is spun up uh, on EKS and uh, this is called the staging environment. And at this point, uh, you don't see it in this case, but these are manual steps. So th this will be grayed out. These actually were grayed out. And you have to manually click on these to do an incremental rollout. Uh, you can choose 10, 25, 50, or 100%. An incremental rollout into production uh, reduces the risk and contributes, uh, contributes to a better user experience uh, and reduces uh, the danger of an outage. And after the uh, application has been rolled out to production into the production environment, another performance test is run um, in production. So let's go back uh, to the completed merged MR. And I want to click on production here. All right, so this is showing the production environment. Uh, this is this list is actually an auditable sequence of changes that have been applied to the production environment. And um, this is the last one that was run. 
The nice thing about this auditable sequence of changes is that at any point in time, if you introduce a change and you notice that this is showing an unexpected behavior in production, you can always roll back the environment by clicking on this on this button right here, the rollback environment, which will take you back um, to a previous a previous known state. At this point, you can uh, click on uh, View Deployments, and this is actually the application running in production. As you notice, it has a new, the new color that we applied, orange, and it has the AWS prefix. So the two changes that we introduced, introduced into production. The other thing I wanted to show you was the, um, the monitoring. We were here. So let's go back to production. Sorry, I shouldn't have closed that window. So I'll show you the deployment. So now let's click on monitoring. And we have Prometheus running on the EKS cluster, collecting, collecting metrics. And this is showing you metrics, uh, not just for the cluster, but also for the running application here. And one thing I like to show you is, um, Let's go back and let's redeploy. Let's redeploy this environment. And then let's go back to the monitoring window. And what you will see here now is this symbol here, this little rocket here. Now let's change it to actually three uh, 30 minutes actually. And the, the rockets that you see here are actually um, a change that was just rolled out to production. And it's uh, you can actually see the job itself that executed as a result of that uh, that update to production. And the nice thing about these indicators is that um, they can help you troubleshoot production issues because there is a correlation between the behavior of, for example, total memory here and the introduction of, the, of that change. So let's say you apply a change and you see that memory is going out of whack, then you can actually, in, from, from looking at the graph, you can see, oh, that change, uh, you know, was highly, you know, likely that it, that change caused that issue in production, that much higher consum consumption of memory. And I'll, again, like I mentioned, this helps you troubleshoot uh, issues, uh, production issues faster. So these demos so far have used uh, EKS and ECS as a deployment platforms. However, you can also use uh, GitLab with bare metal and virtualized deployment environments as well as different operating systems uh, like Windows. Now I'd like to show you a, a peek behind the scenes of how easy it is to create projects and work with pipelines. So for that, I'd like to take you to my GitLab dashboard here. These are all my projects. And um, to create a new project, you can create a new, a new project. Click on new project here. And here at the top, you can say create from template and there's a variety uh, of different templates here that will help you, um, you know, will get you easily jump started um, on your development uh, effort. So uh, we've been using the spring one here, the, what you've been seeing, the spring uh, project that you've been seeing came from uh, this template. So you can use that template. Now also, you could import a project from GitHub so um, you know this allows you for the easy migration of your projects to GitLab, um, and you uh, you know and you could also integrate GitLab CI/CD with GitLab, for example. You could do that from here. You can import projects, as you can see from other um, repositories as well. All right, so let's go back to create from template. We're gonna select uh, the Spring template. And let's just call it uh, prac for 
dash step one I think that's what I called it now this point uh, you can select it to be private uh, or public project um, in this case uh, we uh, you know we can leave it as private and once you create project it'll create a brand new project that will look like this right here right here this was actually populated I'm not gonna press on create uh, because I already did it'll it'll reject it because the project that project name is already taken but uh, this is basically once you click create this this is what you will get it populates your project with sample code that we saw before and um, and at this point what you can do is you can start creating a new pipeline for this project okay so let's create that so you would say here plus and you say new file and in this case let's do a GitLab CI YAML and again you can choose from a variety of templates uh, for pipelines here for different languages and different frameworks but in this case what I like to what I like to pick the sample pipeline or template pipeline for auto DevOps which is what you've been seeing all those pi the pipelines that you've been seeing so far uh, are, are based or, or were the um, the auto devils pipeline which is this one here for example the stages you we were seeing graphically earlier are listed right here uh, build test deploy review etc including the incremental production uh, rollout to production etc they are all here so you can start uh, with this uh, pipeline if you want uh, you can ease, you can modify it if you want but even if if a template doesn't fit your needs you can create your own uh, to modify this one, for example, uh, there is some instructions here, but if let's say you don't want tests, you want to disable the tests in your pipeline so that they can run faster, you can just copy that and paste it here in the variable section here of the, of the uh, CI YAML file, and they would just say you set that to true. And if you set that to true, then it'll disable all the uh, test-related uh, jobs in, you, in this pipeline. Okay. So just like GitLab uh, helps organizations speed up the development and delivery of their applications, it can also do the same for their infrastructure. So uh, let's discuss here um, GitOps. So infrastructure as code uh, is a discipline of using Git uh, or GitOps uh, is a discipline of using Git as the main source of truth for managing uh, your infrastructure as code. Where, for example, the YAML files defining your infrastructure are like the source files in an application. In this group, uh, you can see two subgroups, one for the app applications, which is apps, and one for the infrastructure as code. Uh, there's a nice separation of roles and concerns between development and operations, uh, which optimizes the work and collaboration among teams. Uh, in addition, GitLab uh, granular role-based permissions uh, helps to accomplish uh, this in a safe and controlled manner. So let's, um, let's go to, uh, to the infra subgroup here uh, there is a project called AWS and this project right here contains uh, files that are describe your infrastructure as code so we're using in this case uh, Terraform and um, for example we can review some of these uh, the VPC.tc describes your network uh, using a Terraform uh, file here And this specifies in the number of subnets you're going to have and what they're going to be. And it's using the module VPC here. Uh, let's see, for example, the EKS uh, Terraform uh, file. It actually is the Amazon EKS configuration for the cluster. Here, for example, we specifying that the that's going to be the uh, instance type, CPU type. Uh, you can select from a variety of uh, of instance types from Amazon here. 
and also is going to be a starting uh, number of nodes of five for that specific cluster. And we're using the module EKS there in here. Then other files, for example, the backend.tf is the state file, uh, location configuration, uh, the GitLab admin uh, uh, Terraform, uh, it, uh, it adds the Kubernetes service account and the group cluster TF, it registers Kubernetes cluster to GitLab uh, group, for example. So uh, to show you the running application, uh, we can go to the apps here. And again, if we go to this project, this is again the same project that we've been uh, covering through this demo. This is the Java Spring project using the template. If we go to uh, operations and environments, we can click on production. And here you can see the application is running um, with all the changes that we applied through the MR. Now this is this project is a separate project, uh, but it's, it's applying the GitOps concepts um, to the way the, um, the groups and subgroups have been organized. All right, so to wrap up, uh, we have gone over uh, how GitLab can help organizations speed up their software development and delivery. Uh, we discussed uh, Auto DevOps and how it can get you started quickly with pipelines that are germane to your project language and deployment environment, whether it is EKS, ECS, bare metal, virtualized environments, or even Windows. We went over how easy it is to create a project and create a mo and modify a pipeline. And lastly, we cover how GitLab can help you in managing your infrastructure as code. Lastly, GitLab is a complete DevOps platform uh, delivered as a single application, fundamentally changing the way development, security, and ops teams collaborate. GitLab helps teams accelerate software delivery from weeks to minutes, reduce development costs, and reduce the risk of application vulnerabilities while increasing developer productivity. Thank you so much.